In ancient India, there was a strong and rich king named Samudragupta. He had plenty of enemies who were jealous of his triumph and desired his throne. Among his enemies was a well-off merchant named Virjivora who was determined to destroy the king and take his place. Virjivora was a ruthless harsh cunning and sly individual using all sort of underhanded tactics to achieve his goal. One day, Virjivora gathered his helpers and asked them for their advice on the best way to destroy the king. One advisor suggested hiring a killer to kill him. Another proposed spreading rumors to spoil his name and yet another recommended paying off his soldiers to turn against him. However, Virjivora rejected all these suggestions, thinking they were too dangerous. At last, a wise old man who had been listening to the conversation chimed in. There are four ways to destroy your enemy, he said. The first is to end his life. The second is to damage his good name, the third is to sow disagreement among his friends, and the fourth is to control his thoughts. Fascinated, Virjivora requested the old man to explain these four ways in detail. The old man began. The first method, to kill your enemy physically, is the most obvious but also the most risky and uncertain. The second way, to ruin your enemy's reputation, is more indirect but carries its own risks. The third method, to create discord among your enemy's allies, requires great skill and cunning. And the fourth way, to conquer your enemy's mind, is the most powerful and subtle of all. Impressed by the old man's wisdom, Virjivora requested him to teach him how to conquer his enemy's thoughts. The old man agreed and began to teach Virjivora the art of mental conquest and mental dominance. The first thing the old man taught Virjivora was to understand his own mind. He said, you cannot conquer your enemy's mind if you cannot control your own mind. Your mind I resembles a wild horse that must be tamed and trained. If you allow your mind to be ruled by anger, greed, or fear, you will never be able to conquer your enemy's mind. The second thing the old man taught Virjivora was to understand his enemy's mind. He said, you must know your enemy as well as you know yourself. You must understand his strengths and weaknesses, his hopes and fears, his likes and dislikes. Only then can you use that knowledge to your advantage. The third thing the old man taught Virjivora was to use psychological tactics to influence his enemy's mind. He explained, there are many tactics you can use to conquer your enemy's mind. You can use praise to boost his ego, you can use fear to make him doubt himself, you can use guilt to make him feel ashamed of himself, and you can use compassion to appeal to his sense of humanity. But whatever tactic you use, you must be careful not to overdo it or your enemy will catch on. Virjivora paid close attention to the elders' teachings and started applying them. He began by sending presents and compliments to the king, praising his good qualities and successes. He also spread gossip about the king's adversaries, portraying them as inept and foolish to the public. He even succeeded in causing disagreements among the king's supporters by planting seeds of doubt and distrust among them. As time passed, Virjivora's schemes appeared to be effective. The king's standing dwindled, and his influence began to wane. Yet, Virjivora remained unsatisfied. He aimed to dominate the king's thoughts, causing him to question himself and diminish his resolve to resist. So Virjivora resolved to employ the most potent weapon of all, compassion. He visited the king's palace and earnestly pleaded for forgiveness, admitting his wrongdoings and expressing remorse for his past deeds. He even volunteered to pledge his loyalty to the king and assist him in any manner possible. The king was surprised by Virjivora's abrupt change of attitude, yet he was also astute and empathetic. He saw past Virjivora's ploy but opted to afford him an opportunity to demonstrate his genuineness. Consequently, he embraced Virjivora's proposal and appointed him as one of his most relied upon advisors. As Virjivora collaborated closely with the king, his outlook gradually shifted. He came to understand that his pursuit of power and riches had obscured the real essence of existence. Witnessing the hardships and destitution endured by the populace, he developed profound empathy toward them. Moreover, he observed the king's sagacity and compassion, which stirred him with admiration and motivation. One day, Virjivora approached the king and inquired, Your Majesty, I have a question. You have extended immense kindness and compassion to me despite my attempts to harm you. How can you exhibit such generosity and empathy towards someone who sought to undermine you? 
The king smiled and replied, Virgi Vora, I am not kind and compassionate because of weakness or folly. I am kind and compassionate because it is the correct path to follow. The most formidable adversary isn't the one who attempts physical destruction but the one who aims for spiritual ruin. When we counter hate with love, violence with peace, and greed with generosity, we triumph not only over our enemy's mind but over our own as well. Virgivora was profoundly touched by the king's words, realizing his folly in believing that power and wealth could grant him happiness. He resolved to emulate the king's example, devoting himself to serving others and nurturing compassion and wisdom. Consequently, Virgivora emerged as one of the most significant benefactors in the realm, leveraging his riches and sway to aid the impoverished and destitute. Additionally, he became a devout disciple of Gautam Buddha, who espoused that the true means to overcome adversaries lies not in physical aggression but in fostering compassion, wisdom and inner tranquility. In the end, Virgivora comprehended that the genuine adversary resides not externally but internally. It is the foe of ignorance, greed, and hatred that misguides us and brings suffering. However, by mastering our own mind, by nurturing compassion and wisdom, we can surmount any challenge and attain genuine happiness and contentment. The tale of Virgivora imparts a valuable lesson, even the staunchest foe can transform into a friend through kindness and compassion. It underscores that forgiveness and reconciliation wield greater strength than revenge and animosity. Ultimately, the narrative serves as a poignant reminder of the repercussions of our actions and urges us to lead lives imbued with integrity and compassion. It encourages us to treat others with kindness and respect, consistently striving to do what is right, even amidst challenges. If you enjoyed and found value in our insights please consider liking and subscribing to our channel for more mindful content thank you for joining us on this path towards inner harmony. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe for more thought-provoking content ahead and please share to one you love in your life.